Hey, on this episode of Joe's and Make You Go Yo. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at G.I. Joe Classified Shockwave. Uh, why would I want Shockwave in my collection? Well, to be honest, it's really simple. Back in the day, I stepped away from G.I. Joe after we saw Cobra La. You remember that? Those guys that were bugging, that were basically buggish, who were totally, okay, I just thought they were stupid. And I thought it was stupid how Cobra just kind of went, oh, okay, you're Cobra Law, we're going to follow you. <laughs> Cobra La 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 La. Yeah, stupidest battle cry. It was, the whole thing was stupid. I really didn't like any of it, and, and it was like, ugh. God, it was so annoying. So I, I got out, I grabbed a couple of figures in 87, but stayed away from Cobra Law entirely. Then, you know, a couple of years later, I'm watching TV. I can't even remember what I was watching. And I see this ad for Swamp Masher. Driven by version 2 Storm Shadow, who is now Joe, and Shockwave. Oh, like, who's this, who's this Shockwave dude? That's a Transformer name. I liked him. He was wearing blue blue camo. That's cool. I think that's awesome. I'm gonna, and he's got a ball cap on instead of just having the balaclava, which I didn't know what it was called back then. And I was just like, these, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm definitely getting that Storm Shadow because that's cool. I'm glad they finally did that. But this Shockwave guy is pretty darn cool all by himself, too. So I think I'm going to grab him as well, and I'm going to get that Swamp Masher thing, because that looks cool. Some people might scoff at me for saying that, but I thought that was a cool vehicle. I always did. He, you know, I love the wheels, because it had the wheels from Damnation Alley, and they rolled around, so, you know, you got real altering capabilities. I liked it. So, went out, bought him, and, uh, Got uh, got Storm Shadow version two as well, and uh, the Swamp Masher. And well, I was back in the Joes. <laughs> I took almost well, it wasn't even a full year. I would say about eight months off, and that is the long, that is the most non collecting I've ever done. Now, um, I will say I slowed down a lot, and I some I would have some dry spells because I was well, dark times I was pretty broke, so. I'm selling my stuff I'm not buying stuff but I wasn't not collecting I was just paused you know the desire was still there let me say that but I just couldn't get the uh, funds to do it thankfully that's a long time away and you know I don't have to deal with that anymore but today um you know I've said a million times I reserve classified for my favorites um this and, you know, I give Shockwave credit for being the gateway drug for me to come back into G.I. Joe all those years ago. So I thought, yeah, I should just get him on general principle. What do I think? Well, that's pretty good. Let's talk about why, all right? Um, now, going over the paint job, I notice, I mean, there is a little bit of... Yellow scattered here and there, but it's not all over the place like on the original figure. So I don't know what the choice, what the thought was on that choice, but okay, I'll go with it. The detail on the head looks pretty good. Um, the vest, overlay vest looks really good. And, you know, all around he looks pretty good. I mean, can't complain one bit. I don't notice any uh, paint issues. So, yeah, I'm going to say... Paint and detail looks awesome, man. Awesome. Articulation, again, this is G.I. Joe Classified. We know what this is. Uh, there's nothing special, new or special here. So I'm going to move on from that. I know, that gets a little boring. It? It's just the same thing. Yeah, well, unless there's something new. I mean, what? why even bother, right? Accessories are pretty interesting. He's got a, he's got a nightstick and a riot shield. The Riot Shield's a new one. His original did not come with that, obviously. But it does look cool. 
mean, it looked very cool. I like it a lot. And I don't think I would accept that from too many other characters. I mean, I know he was a SWAT specialist, so yeah, that works. His, uh, his cap does come off, so that counts as an accessory. And then he has these two guns, and, uh, okay. And they kind of look like maybe Uzi-ish, Mac-10-ish, but smaller and doesn't have the silencer on that's a bit of a disappointment because, you know, one of the things I did like about Shockwave was his gun was kind of unique. Uh, as I remember, I believe it was an oversized Mac-10. I think that's what it was. Um, he's got these two knives. One's a regular looking knife. The other one kind of looks like a fishing knife where it's got the uh, hook in it to gut the fish. I don't hate it. I like it. Um... Of course, it goes on the ankle, which is like, eh. You know, ankle blades look cool in movies, but that's it. I mean, I, 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 I know, I know, I know. You know, what, what do you do? Is do you keep with the original design or like, right? Not terrible accessories, but I did find myself once again dipping into my Valiverse extras and grabbing out that kind of oozy looking weapon with the silencer on the front to give to him, because at least that looks a lot more like the weapon he had with his original figure um he had that and a pistol um i could probably grab a pistol out of the box too if i wanted to i, I probably won't though because i just i think with the oozy looking weapon it looked just fine and scale wise yeah i like i'm sorry it's, it's, you know he's classified man come on he's, he's in the classified scale I mean, yeah, yeah okay well Alrighty then. Uh, once again, we do have some really soft accessories here. Thankfully, that shield is not soft because I heard stories of the Alley Viper shield being soft, and that's really annoying. Now, is this my favorite figure of GI Joe Classified? Nah. Is this a gateway to get me in the classified? Get me from leaving classified? No. I am still backing out of classified, but grabbing some on the way out. This one, I really got for sentimental reasons. I mean, again, I have to say I really I really enjoyed when Shockwave dragged me back into G.I. Joe. And I bought a lot of the 88 stuff. Not all of it, but a good chunk. I bought almost all the 89 stuff. I thought that was one of the most underrated years ever. And uh, the 1990 stuff, I feel the same way about. So, you know. And you can go, hey, wait a minute, that's not right, man. And I'll go... That is. You can't tell me that I didn't think that stuff was cool. Because I did. And, you know, again, that's another section of G.I. Joe that kind of gets ignored. People are kind of going back into the neon 90s and going, oh yeah, these molds were great at least. Which they were. The colors were garish, but the molds were great. But this sort of era of G.I. Joe was kind of ignored because Nobody really knows what to make of it. It's uh, Some of it was featured in the D cartoon, some wasn't. And kind of hard to figure out how that all fits in. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching another Rich About G.I. Joe session. Nah, man, I'm talking about G.I. Joe. And <laughs> don't forget to do the whole YouTube thing. I won't tell you what it is, but you know what it is, right? And keep on rocking in the free world. That's Neil Young. Damn it. I gotta get this out outro. I need an outro. One of these days. One of these days I'll get it.